if you would take my uh, worship message and just open it right now. One of the reasons I print out the worship message is if you hear something, you remember it. But if you hear it and read it, you remember it even better. So uh, there's, a, there's a method to my madness <laughs> about printing this out each week. Uh, most of the time I have a scripture passage, but for the next few Sundays I'm going to uh, have scripture concepts, but not necessarily scripture passages. We all constantly need, need to learn how to forgive, and we need to relearn how to forgive. And of course, the reason we need to relearn how to forgive is that a lot of times people offend us and act inappropriately. Uh, and a lot of times uh, we offend other people and act inappropriately, and we need to learn how to forgive ourselves too. So learning how to forgive is the foundation of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Jesus' disciples said, teach us how to pray. In that prayer that Jesus taught them, it's, you know, help us to forgive other people like you forgive us. It, the core of the Lord's Prayer is love, and the core of the Lord's Prayer is forgiveness, and the core of the Christian church uh, and the core of Christian people is forgiveness and love, too. Uh, one of the things that we really desperately need to do as Christians is appropriate the forgiveness that God has given us into our lives. There's a couple of ways that we appropriate this forgiveness. One is that when we harm somebody else, we ask them to forgive us. It's best if you can ask them to forgive you right away. But if they're the kind of person who holds grudges and stuff, you might want to wait till they calm down a little bit. <laughs> and uh, uh, then a few weeks later, a few months later, one, one person I had to wait 15 years. <laughs> uh, I was willing to forgive them right at the get-go, but they weren't willing to listen to me. And, and uh, so after 15 years, they said, well, I forgave you some time ago. But what happened in this situation, and I, I'm sure you might have had it happen in your situation too, they forgave me up here, but they never forgave me down here. And so I, was, I, I assumed that they'd forgiven me down here, and I was interacting with them. Mm, no, they hadn't forgiven me quite yet. They, they'd done the mental thing, and, and that's, that's the way we appropriate forgiveness. We mentally forgive people, and then we've got to forgive them down here. It applies to yourself too. You mentally know that God has forgiven you if you're a Christian. But have you forgiven yourself? Have you appropriated it? Have you changed it emotionally? Forgiveness is all about emotions. And emotions are incredibly powerful. One of the things that I'm discovering as I'm studying this book on, on sleep is emotions are incredible incredibly powerful and come along with ideas and uh, how many times have, have you and I had an emotion come up and it reminds us of, of something that happened in the past and I, I don't necessarily mean bad emotions uh, really wonderful things uh, happened in the wedding yesterday on the north side of Banner Creek Lake and, and very emotional things happened those emotions are going to stay with everyone that was at that wedding. Those positive emotions. But also negative emotions, too, have tremendous power, you know. Uh, people with PTSD, they can't watch combat movies. They can't watch murder mysteries because those emotions are so powerful. And so forgiveness is all about appropriating forgiveness in your mind and in your emotions and in your heart and in your life. And every so often, and I know this is true of everyone, every so often there's something that you and I have done in the past that we feel really bad about and it will come up to our consciousness. And, and what I tell myself, and I would encourage you to do this, is I've already asked God to forgive me 
I've already forgiven myself and I refuse to go there. I am not going to live in the shame and guilt that I had for doing what I did at that particular time. And, and that repeatedly comes up. And I would submit to you, that's our enemy doing that. I don't talk much about the devil because I'm always going to be talking about God's love. But our enemy wants to keep us in shame and guilt. The Holy Spirit cannot live in shame and guilt. And the Holy Spirit cannot live in anger. When we f refuse to forgive people, we're living in anger and the Holy Spirit can't live in us. And I'm not saying this forgiveness is easy. It's, it's not easy at all. But when you learn how to forgive yourself and forgive other people, uh, you can experience inner peace far beyond words. So the foundation of forgiving others is first learning how to forgive ourselves. And Jesus is an incredible example of this. He readily forgave hated tax collectors. He readily forgave his disciples who abandoned him. He forgave Peter who denied him. The high priest's servant was arresting him and Peter took a sword and, and practically cut the man's ear off and Jesus healed that ear in the Garden of Gethsemane when they were arresting him. I would say that's forgiveness, wouldn't you? It's an amazing story. Uh, Jesus pardoned prostitutes, tax collectors, the thief on the cross, the people that were crucifying him. How can we forgive like Jesus? It's, it's not easy, though. It takes work. And it takes the Holy Spirit in you. In short, uh, when you and I really mentally, emotionally, forgive other people and forgive ourselves and then we refuse to let the evil one lay shame and guilt on stuff that God's already forgiven us then we're set free and then the Holy Spirit can really live in us and this is something that we have to do all our Christian life and so this is simple prayer Lord make me willing to forgive myself is so foundational Lord, make me willing to forgive these other people that have really, really harmed me and make me willing to forgive myself. Uh, a personal story, you know. Uh, I forgive a soldier who threatened to kill me. Every time he gets drunk, he still threatens to kill me. <laughs> but I still forgive him. Because I don't want that soldier living in my head. <laughs> you don't want somebody like that living in your head. And uh, uh, it's so sad because I know this guy was a great soldier in combat zone. I know that he's living in his own personal hell. You project your anger on other people that have your character flaws too. Have you noticed that? <laughs> People that have your weaknesses, you don't want to forgive them. <laughs> you want to hold it against them. But when Jesus said the Lord's Prayer, he didn't say, well, you can make exceptions for this person <laughs> and that person. You and I got to forgive everybody. So this morning... I want to tell you, in the name of Jesus, I'm forgiving Vladimir Putin. And I'm not telling you that's easy. Because he's taken a society with free elections and made it a Stalinist dictatorship again. He's killed 200 journalists that wrote articles about him. And thousands of other people that you don't even know about. He's killed or put in the Gulag Archipelago prison system of Russia. And so every day, I gotta say, God, right now I wanna hold it against Vladimir Putin, but if I have anger and resentment, I know your Holy Spirit can't live in me. I forgive the Archbishop of Moscow who blesses Putin as he's killing these innocent people in Ukraine. 
as he's trying to stir up stuff in Serbia, which is part of Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, so we just continually have to forgive if we're going to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, so continually ask to be forgiven. Now, you, you and I have been forgiven a long time ago. We've been forgiven a long time ago. But appropriating that forgiveness is really important. Uh, I mentioned this a few years ago, and I, I'll mention it again to you. I have a, f- a friend. We're in a VA group together. And he said something that absolutely startled me, but I, he was just being honest. He said, you know, people that tormented me in grade school and high school in college and in the military, I remember every single one of them. And if I have a chance to get even with them, I'm going to get even with them. And those of you that have known me for a few years, you know I'm not too shy, you know. <laughs> and so I took him on. I said, I can't live like you. I don't want those people living in my head. I try to forgive every single person, even as they're harming me or even as the memory of how they harm me took place. I don't want to live like you. And again, uh, when you and I love people, when we hug people, when we forgive people, the whole body chemistry of our brain changes. And you know, most people have never heard of this, but the biggest nerve in your body is not the nerve that goes down your backbone. The biggest nerve in your body is your vagus nerve. And it, your lungs, your heart, your stomach, your intestines, your privates, all that. I'm trying to keep it clean here. <laughs> All your organs are controlled by your vagus nerve, and that nerve directly hooks into your brain. And when you, uh, I'd encourage all of you, this is a medical deal here, I'd encourage all of you to take probiotics and eat things like sauerkraut and stuff that make really good chemistry in your intestines, because that directly affects your brain. So when you and I have anger and resentment against people, our stomach gets upset. Imagine that. Our bowels get upset. Our heart, the rhythm goes up. Our blood pressure increases. The capillaries that deliver oxygen to our body tighten up. It's a bad thing. (laughs) It's a real bad thing to be angry all the time, to be unforgiving all the time and everything. But even worse is what happens to our spirit. Our spirit stops being a child of God. And it starts getting allied with the powers of darkness. It's so hard to love our enemies. And uh, there's a comic strip. Uh, many of the younger people in the congregation won't. It's called Pogo. Uh, and Pogo says something was real profound in that comic strip. He said, we have found the enemy. And the enemy is us. <laughs> We're our own worst enemies, what Jesus is saying in the Lord's Prayer. We tend to be our own worst enemy. So continually forgive others for their sake. And it, this is not easy stuff. The barking dog next door, uh, the beer party down the block, <laughs> all kinds of stuff like that person that comes and steals the flowers out of your yard, you know. (laughs) Uh, Just continually keep forgiving people. And uh, for your sake and for their sake. And so the Holy Spirit just simply can't live in an angry heart. And, you know, I'm I'm real concerned about the, the, the left side of this nation and the right side of this nation because they're both angry at each other. That's going to destroy us. Uh, I'm, I'm praying that 
the left side of politics forgives the right side of politics and the right side forgives the left side and try to work together. Because it's insanity to, to live in the same house and be at constant war with each other, you know. So another thing love does, and this is not in your text, it compromises. Not crazy compromises that hurt everybody, but compromises that help each other. It's, it's so hard to compromise because we're so stubborn. Uh, uh, there was a Frenchman who observed how things operate in the United States. His name was de Tocqueville. And he, he toured the United States uh, when we were just a young democracy. And he said something that's, that was very funny, but it's also very true. Uh, he said, watching politics in the United States is watch, it's like watching people make sausage. He said, it's a terrible, bloody, grisly process. He said, but it tastes pretty good. <laughs> and, and really, uh, that sort of sums up forgiveness too. This is a, it's a bloody, gut-wrenching thing to forgive people that have harmed you and to forgive yourself. For, and every one of you have done really stupid things, right? Things you knew were wrong, you did it in any way, and then you think, why in God's green earth did I do that? That's a bloody kind of thing. It's hard emotionally to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself anyway. That one thing that's tormenting you right now, that's really bothering you, in the name of Jesus Christ, forgive yourself. There's a, a little thing in our bulletin, and it's a, the last part of your message, too, but this is so important. The promised land is not in some other nation. The promised land is not even in the Middle East. The promised land is in you. And what this means is you and I can live in heaven here on earth. When we love other people, when we forgive other people, when we love ourselves and we forgive ourselves and appropriate the forgiveness that Jesus gave us on the cross and his resurrection. No marriage is going to survive if people are constantly going like this. Uh, no church will survive. No city or state or nation will survive. Uh, but to get, get it back to us, you and I will not live We'll die sooner than we should die if we're unforgiving, just from a purely medical standpoint. And I'm watching my friend that I told you about earlier in my group in the VA. I'm watching him go downhill physically because he's so full of anger and so full of rage that he's aging worse than almost anybody in the group. And I love the guy. I love him. And it just hurts me. But you know something? There's a Christian in that group, too. And he heard me take on this guy. He said, you know, Ron, I've started forgiving people that have harmed me. He said, that's, that's a good way to live, isn't it? <laughs> I said, yeah, you're a follower of Jesus Christ. It's the only way to live. Amen. Amen.